Welcome to Grace, Grace with Nina and Michelle. I'm Michelle Humphrey. And I am Nina Keegan. Welcome to the broadcast today. We're so happy you joined us. Uh, if, if, you, if you've been a Christian for longer than five minutes, you know, there's a likelihood that God has blatantly interrupted your plans for his. And that is a good thing because, you know, ultimately, we don't want anything God doesn't right. want or have for us. We want to be on his path. Right. But sometimes the road that you might be going down that you think is all a great idea, it, the Bible says his ways are not our ways. And we don't want those ways, our own. What we think we're so smart and we have, you know, we need to let go of what we think is good and seek God's wisdom and God's plan for us. Right. Jer <clears throat> go ahead. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me, and I will show you great and mighty things and the way to go. Call on him and he will show you the way to go. And, and I think tell we, you things that you do not know. Isn't that How a great scripture? How many times are you asking God for a plan you really don't know? You know which, what plan I'm always amazed about is Noah. I mean, how specific was the ark, right? I mean, I would love to hear from God like that. You know, this needs to be this many inches and it needs to, you know, can you imagine? And you know how crazy big that boat was? And it took like a hundred years or something ridiculous. So can you just imagine in a hundred years time, like if that was your neighbor, You'd be like, there's crazy. He's, nuts. He's like he over there building this giant boat. Nuts. They were laughing at him. You know, and think about how God interrupted his plans to build a boat and it had never rained. I mean, I mean, seriously, th that's why it says to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So think about that with Noah. I mean, did he, you, yeah. he interrupted. Did you ever notice, like in the Bible, God never really sat around and asked them, so what do you think of my plan? Like God's not yeah, asking you. He doesn't need your He doesn't opinion. need, he's not soliciting our advice. He yes. doesn't, he's not asking. He's just wanting our uh, amen and our cooperation. He wants us to just get in there and say, okay. When, he does say, come let us reason together. Well. Which, I mean, we're, he doesn't need our reason, but we need his. So he's, he's allowing us to come and have a discussion with him. But he's not going to change his mind, typically. There is a couple times in the Bible where he did. But, uh, but really, God's plan for you has been written before you ever lived a day. And yeah. so when it comes time for you to, you know, when we're getting off the path, when we're getting in our own, you know, little agenda and trying to make things happen, and sometimes it's like, you're up against a wall, you're beating your head against the wall trying to make things work out. And sometimes you just need to take a step back and say, you know what, okay, God, what, where are we in this? Where right. are you in this? Where, where am I off? Now, I'm not saying that if your, your plan, be, go back to what God has said. I'm not saying that if something didn't happen yet, and you're like, okay, should I abandon ship and go on and do something else? No, because God's timing is not your timing. But you have to go back to what did God say? What has God right. spoken over your business or your company? Or where has God led you or started you from the beginning? Those prophecies stand. God will always confirm you. And a lot of times he's working on everything else and preparing well, you for that. Right. And we always, you know, and our message today is entitled, Let God Interrupt Your Plans for His. Yes. And sometimes when we go through a trial, we, we think, well, it's all over, you know, and there is scripture that says, I know that the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, plans to prosper you and to bless you with a hope and a future. Well, I remember a friend of mine, she got very, very sick and she had three boys and she just began to think about, you know, how she was not going to be able to finish raising those boys. And she, you know, you know, mm -hmm. just, it's pretty, you she, get I mean, that she scared. really almost died. And so, I mean, I understand that, but she was telling me all these things and kind of upset. And I remember thinking, wait, 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 wait. And I stopped her and I said, wait a minute, tell me all the prophecies that God has spoken over you. Mm -hmm. And she had so many. And I said, well, has that happened yet? Mm -hmm. No. I'm, I'm like, then you're not going to die. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, that's just the enemy trying to scare you. You know, and, and so we have to remember what did God speak to us specifically? What does God's word say? And we stand on that and we, we say, I, I mean, honestly, I, I, am, I, I like to plan, but I always say to the Lord, I'm planning this, but please interrupt my plans because I really, you know, you, I want you to put my life in order. 
that's the only way it's going to be successful, rewarding. That's where the anointing is. Mm -hmm. So we want God's interruptions. Yeah. I'll even put fleeces out that say, if this isn't of you, close the door right now. Exactly. If this isn't from you, let this person not even call me again. Let this not even happen again. I will put out crazy fleeces because I want to be in the will of God. There's no place why should you ever want to be anywhere else? Right. Because, you know, God's not going to bless what he didn't ordain in your exactly. life. And so you always want to be on his path. And so, and we can look at all the path, paths of pe people in the Bible, whether it was David or Joseph or Abraham, you know, think about all over and over again. Abraham was promised he would be the father of many nations when he, he didn't even have a child. Children. Exactly. And look <laughs> at David. David is one of my favorite examples of God interrupted his plan. I mean, the kid was out in the desert shepherding sheep, mm -hmm. you know, and I mean, he, he, there was no big expectation for David's life, except that he was going to be a shepherd. And yet God, you know, sp the Bible said right there that, it, that God looks on, uh, that man looks on the outside and God looks at the heart. They lined all of David's brothers up. They all were looking good. They, you know, they had their dippity doo in their hair, I'm sure, because the prophet Samuel was coming over to anoint one of them as king. I mean, that would be pretty big news in the family, right? And mm -hmm. so Jesse, the dad, didn't even bother to bring David in because in his mind, David was irrelevant. He didn't even think about it. You know, he was out shepherding sheep. Mm -hmm. So Samuel, he looks at the tall one and he's thinking, here's my guy. You know, he's the a oldest, Cary, Cary the Grant looking guy. He looks great. And, and the Lord re just stopped him right there and said, no. And he said, no on each one. And, and then Samuel was finished with sons and he looked at Jesse and said, do you have any more? And he said, oh yeah, there's one more. And he went and got David. And David, here he was just minding his own business. Now that's an interruption of plans. I'm in for that, right? Yeah, so, <laughs> but if you look at also, there's more parts to that story. If you think about the other part where the brothers even said, looking down on their little brother, go out and tend back to tending your few sheep. They your few sheep, yeah, they few belittled sheep. him whenever and he's like, the only one yeah. in Israel that's wanting to fight Goliath and his brothers basically said go, go out. back and yeah. tend to those few sheep so but the thing about it is is you know we can't always no matter what god god has a plan for us it doesn't matter the enemy's always going to come against your blessing and yeah. try to steal your seed he's going to try to steal what god has said what you know to do by telling you oh, you're you're it's never going to happen this isn't going to th this will never work out that's what even his brothers and god it can be your very your spouse your children it can be anybody be, and they don't know it and they're not trying to be mean they right. literally were trying to protect their brother they didn't think he was well, old I enough mean, or if, big enough if your little brother showed up and there's this you know, I forgot how tall he was, like nine foot something, right? A giant, giant Goliath. And, you know, and my little brother showed up, I guarantee, which my brother probably would have shown up and done the same thing. And I would have been <laughs> terrified based on our past history. He would have had that heart. But, but David said he would fight him. And then, and then, you know, they were all terrified. So they were like, well, all right, you know, we'll go with it. And he was a teenager and he tried to put on here, Saul, six foot five, he, he was, the Bible says he was head and shoulders above all the others. Mm -hmm. So he, you know, I don't know if exactly six foot five, but something along those lines. And he tried to put his armor on David. David, inter God interrupted that plan. David took that off. He took off the, the, the world's armor and he put on the spirit of God. The armor of God. And he said, I do not come with you, come to you with a sword. I come to you with the spirit and the, and, and the word of God. Yeah. And he hit him in the head with a rock. Everybody yeah. knows that story. But I love that interruption. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and that brought David into, I mean, he was renowned after that. You know, I, I, can you imagine this teenager having mm -hmm. that kind of courage? But that came from the spirit of God. Yeah. And, and that's another, that's what we need whenever... Yeah. Uh, God is trying to interrupt your plans. Sometimes it's a little scary. He'll ask you to step out. How many times has the Lord spoken to us and we've said, what? You're kidding. Yeah, yeah you know? it's true. But it's the right thing to do. Do you know, there's a lot of times when God's trying to change your plan 
when he wants to bring you into something new, when there's a new calling, a new shift that you're supposed to do in your life. There's a lot of times you might go through something that's a little painful at first. Um, you know, for instance, if, if God wants you to go another career path or he has a different job for you or something like that, there might be a, a dissolution of resources. God might take, you know, sometimes it might be like you're getting a lay, laid off or they're doing a shift in the company. Sometimes you might have to go through something uncomfortable for God to just get you onto that right path. Because if you were just happy as a clam in that job and maybe it's a going nowhere job, maybe you're just going to stay in that same position forever. But God wants to bless you with a promotion and going somewhere Amen. else. But he might not you might have not have gotten to that place of getting moved. You might not have moved yourself from the comfort zone of that job and that paycheck to get to the place where God wants to bless that you. That be a scary thing. When God moves you out of your comfort zone, it is a scary place. Sometimes it's a disillusion of relationships. Yes. Sometimes in order for you to get where you need to go, God might have to remove somebody from your life and it could be very, very painful. I know, you know, I went through a divorce. Uh, I never saw it coming. It was uh, adultery on my husband's part. Um, it was one of the most painful and horrendous things I ever went through in my life. Uh, I literally was prophetically told someone, the Lord sent someone I did not know, did not know me, literally told me what my husband was doing and that there was no reconciliation that the Lord wanted me out. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember hearing that and thinking this person's either crazy or it's true. <laughs> and I found out just a couple of days later that it was 100% true. And so everything I had known, talk about my plan for my life. You know, we were talking about how we were going to live our retirement, what our plans and our life were going to be. And I yeah, thought- you guys had even just built a retirement home. Yes. And we were really, you know, that's what I thought was yeah. my plan. And boy, was that plan interrupted in a big way. And it was tough and it was just a horrible thing to go through but I saw now what where I was and that when I look back in hindsight I, I was really uh, I, I was in a very anxious place there was a lot of things that I was feeling in that relationship that I never I never would have left that relationship without yeah. knowing what was going on that God actually had to tell me so I was going through a really tough time in that relationship but God interrupted that and said he saw he saw what was going on. He knew what that was, how that was hurting me. And yet, you know, here I am uh, now years later and, you know, I get to preach the gospel and do the work of the Lord. And, and God took me from a place I never could have, could have imagined this back at that time. Yeah. And, and, you know, so God has used that for good. He took me from that place. And I'm not saying when God's moving you that you aren't gonna go through some tough times. A lot of times when he's taking someone away from your life, or a bad thing or a bad situation, it might not always be easy, but God will use it for good. He, he when he interrupts your plans, sometimes you go through a difficult time, yes. but it will always be used for good. That is Romans 8, 28, and it's such it's a good hard. scripture. It's hard, especially if you're going through some marital crisis. Some, sometimes, you know, a, a marriage or a divorce, uh, marriage trouble or divorce, I mean, it can be a very bitter time. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, if you press into God, God will get you out of that. I assure you that, that he is going to make the crooked places straight. Yes. And, and the Bible says he'll take your feet out of the miry clay because sometimes mm -hmm. you just feel like you're sinking when you're going through that. Mm -hmm. And he'll place them back on solid rock. And I feel like you and I are both examples. We've, you know, uh, we've both been through marital problems that have turned around for our good. Mm -hmm. You know, she went through a divorce. My marriage was restored after a year and a half. But, you know, I, I believe that the Lord, uh, he, heard, he heard my cry and he interrupted my plans so many times. I think about one night, um, my children were small and, and they were babies. And I was carrying them into church and I had one in each arm and they, because they were, one could barely walk and the other one was just too slow. You know I mean? They were just 17 months apart and my husband and I were separated and I, I just got to church and I, I said to the Lord, I put them in the nursery. I, I got to church and I began to worship and I knew that worship was about over because I was late because it was just so hard to get them around. Yeah. And I, all the way to church, had just cried out to God, interrupt my plans, you know, take my feet 
off out of this miry clay and put them on solid rock. And when I got to church, and I was just like, Lord, let, let the worship service last longer this tonight, you know. And uh, the pastor came up, and he goes, you know what? I just really feel like the worship service needs to, to be a little bit longer tonight. I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. But then it got silent in the church when the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. moved. Yeah. And someone had a word, and the word was, he takes my feet out of the miry clay, and he places them on solid rock. Yeah. That's what I call interrupt my plans, God. Mm -hmm. Here I was before, you know, 10, 15 minutes before, just kind mm -hmm. of feeling sorry for myself because I missed my husband. I hated that we were separated. I was having to, you know, my, my husband traveled anyway a lot. And so I was with my, with my little children. And here he was giving me a promise yeah. in the midst of all of that, interrupting, mm -hmm. intervening in my affairs. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so thankful for that. And that's how you know you're always on his path, no matter how hard it is, no matter what you're going through, no matter what difficult situation, it will be used for good, but God's just asking you to trust him. And, and you know, the same thing, you know, when I was going through my divorce, um, you know, I'm relying every day on what, it was so tough. It was so, such a tumultuous, high treason kind of time in my life. But, um, uh, I was uh, traveling, I, I became a social media coordinator in a large international media. And uh, the woman who, was, uh, who, who started this ministry was from Turkey. And so I was traveling with her and she, a lot of her, the English that she had was very broken and she didn't understand a lot of things. And so I'm in the midst of this divorce and I'm with her, I'm not at home, I'm traveling with her. I, we're actually in her hometown. And uh, I, the night before I'm crying to her and I'm telling her, I just feel so sucker punched. Like it just hit me out of the blue, which mm -hmm. again, my plans are getting interrupted. And she, she said to me, what does this mean, sucker punched? <laughs> she goes, I don't know what I that means. I could just hear her say and that. So, uh, and I told her, I go, it was just like, you know, you're just, it's a surprise. You're just, it's like you're, it you don't even, the you, wind out of you, you didn't even see it coming. Okay, so the very next day we went to church and it was her church. And we walked in and there's praise and worship. And then literally right then and there, the pastor says, somebody in this church is just feeling like it, they, they just got sucker punched. Now the night before she didn't even ever know what that term was. And she looks at me and, she, and he says, if that's you, you need to come to the altar. And she grabs my hand and races me to the altar. And this priest just laid his hands on me and started to prophesy to me. He said, you are in such a rocky boat right now. It's like you're in the middle of the storm, but God's your anchor and he's got you. And I just was in tears. And then he just started just, you know, praying in the spirit over me. And, you know, when you look at, there's just story upon story. Yes. I can look back at every or time. Even how we met, mm -hmm. you know, the Lord told me to go to her house. I did not know her. She was on a list of people, of a couple hundred people. And the Lord said, go now. And, and uh, this partners a, for CBN, and, yeah, so they know what right. kind of list it was. Exactly. And, and so she opened the door and she was waiting to find out if she had breast cancer. She fortunately did not. But... At that moment, you know, I, I, I went over, you talk about an interruption. That was mm -hmm. a divine interruption in the beginning of a friendship a wonderful that will friendship. last a lifetime. And yes. I've never had an issue since. And it's like, so again, you know, why did I go through that? It was a lot of repeat tests and scare. Uh, you know, uh, my boy's father had uh, had died just a few months before this. And I was so she just, was a mess. Whenever I went to her house and rang the doorbell, I really didn't even know what I was going to say to her when she, you know, opened the door. But as I rang the door, God told me what to say. And I said, you know, are you 90 Keegan? God hears your prayers and you're going to be all right. And she just grabs me, pulls me into her house. I don't know her at all. Never saw her never before in my her. life. And she's weeping and wailing and talking to God. Not even to me. She's just talking to God. Thank you, God. Because, <laughs> because he sent someone to my house at my time of need. And, and you know, I, I needed, I, I was just crying out like this can't. That morning I had called the doctor's office for the results. They said that the nurse answered and said, yes, the results are here, but the doctor's going to have to talk to you. I'm by right. myself crying out to God going, I cannot be sick. This is, you know, I cannot And leave have. your boys without a parent. And I was just beside myself. And then literally when she rang the doorbell and I answered it, I was like, 
it's the Mary Kay lady at my house. <laughs> like, who's this lady? All pretty. And I'm like, you know, crying. And, um, and when she told me she was from CBN and that she called me Nina and the way my name is, is spelled, you would, you, everybody would call me Nina. But even then, later we would talk about that. I said, you called me Nina Keegan, which no one does. So she truly was just even hearing my name from the Holy Spirit. And that she spent four hours at my house. She said she wasn't going to leave until we got the results from the doctor. Well, I don't think any one of us would have left. I mean, here she was all alone in her house waiting to find out if, the, if she had cancer. I mean, that would be a, a crazy news. Even though the Lord had said those, I just thought, those words, I just thought, you know, we, I need to wait with her. But all of that was a divine interruption for the plans for our lives. Yes. Because that is how we met. And here we are, uh, nine years later or something like that. Like here we are preaching the gospel together, traveling the world together. And, you know, that was a collision of, of our faith yes. meeting God's plan and us tr trusting and stepping out in faith. And, and I'm there's so, so many he more. interrupted my yes. day that day. And, you know, because I honestly was like, Lord, she's going to think that is so weird. You know, I'm just going to mm. show up at her house. That is just bizarre. And so... You know, but when but, you're asking for God, yeah, God for you're something, for God to interrupt your plans, get ready. He will. And because the Holy Spirit always goes before you on those things. I know a lot of times when you and I are led to minister to somebody, whether it's in an airplane or wherever we are, I know that I know, like I know something about this person that I need, they need yeah, to know. And, and I mean, sometimes we'll tell each other, Hey, I feel like we're supposed to do this. And it, it can be something, I mean, it's, it can be something like kind of scary to do. Yes. You know, I mean, really scary. But when and you we're, know, but but we know each other well enough now that I got know, you. We have what we say. We're, we're good. I'm like, okay, we'll mm -hmm. do it. <laughs> we, we do. One or the uh, the other one. We're like, okay, I'm in because we okay. know how we know how faithful we are and how we we do want to just be led by the Lord and do what He wants. So either but, way, and that's what those are our favorite stories when yes. we go back and we think about how God. It looked like everything was going wrong. And we're like, what is happening? And yet God interrupted our plans. And I'm always amazed at always. that. Always. And you know, there's times where you might think you've heard from God. There was this one time we decided that we had to be at this, we had to go to this conference in England. We just thought it was totally God. We were so- You and can miss God. You can miss God. And sometimes, uh, it, we should have known and now but see this is how God well, teaches you things our spirit, we did but we didn't I, we were I trying know, we to discern that if that the was the enemy was us, we thought you know? he just doesn't want us to go to this conference we yeah. were just so but you know looking back at that now we 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 had no peace we got there it was horrible we fought the whole way to get there then they didn't have a room for us it was just the whole thing they, was they really messed didn't. up they did not have a room for us what and we were registered for the conference. Yes. So everything about it was really just a horrible thing. It just was no peace. It was it was angsty. It was just horrible the whole time. And then we decided to leave early. We just decided to get out of that. It didn't make any sense. It was just horrible in our minds. Like we thought this was really, the enemy was causing us, we thought, to miss out on something that was of God. In, in reality, God was trying to save us from going. But the minute we decided to leave early, the peace came back. When exactly. we got back into God's will, got away from that, because it was really Oppressive. not God at all yeah. when we were there. Then we got back on God's path. We immediately felt peace and we had our joy back. It was horrible. And so, you know, that's a one really big cue. If God's trying to interrupt your plans, uh, chances are wherever, whatever this plan is of yours, it's not going well and you're not feeling peace and you know, you're just, you're, you just know there's angst in it and there, it's just not going Everything well. Everything is hard. Yeah. You know, my husband and I, we bought a house one time and I mean, on paper, it looked like a great idea, but I had such a check in my spirit. He had a check in his spirit. I don't know why we did it. You know, I, we were younger. I hope we wouldn't do it again. But anyway, uh, on the way to close on that house, our tires, which there was nothing wrong with our tires. We had a blowout. We, I mean, God was trying to stop us. Why didn't we say no? Mm -hmm. Let's stop right now. It, it, but we were thinking, well, we've gone too far. You haven't gone too far. Stop mm -hmm. in your tracks. 
turn around, getting God's plan. He is interrupting your bad plan with his good plan. Mm -hmm. Now, seriously, uh, six weeks after we lived in, it, lived in that house, we, we repented. We were like, oh, if we could only go back. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what? We kept thinking, uh, we kept saying to one another uh, that God will always take us back to our last place of disobedience. Mm -hmm. And so we said the only way to get back in the plan is to sell the house. Now, that's a big, that's pretty radical, right? We did it. We sold the house. Mm -hmm. and, and we actually moved to another city, which is really where God wanted us, which is where we still live. And, you know... It's how, I mean, it's how we met. Yeah. You know, I mean, honestly, God has a better plan. If you have that little check in your spirit, listen to the Holy Spirit. It's mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit warning you, stop your plan. God has a better plan. You know, but that's not to say that if you're, if the plan that you're on is taking a while, if, if you're or really, if it's hard, cause if you've been waiting yeah. on something, a lot of times God's working out something in you and that plan still stands. You got to go back to the prophecies on things and what God's confirmed for you. And you got to follow peace. Because sometimes, you know, God's just working things out in you and causing you to trust him. And his timing is not our timing. And sometimes right. it, God's not insta God and he's causing he's you God. to grow in your faith and to rely he on him. Peace. So a lot of times, just because you're not seeing God move right away, don't abandon ship on something that's been good and that God is going to bless because you have to go back to what did God say? What is what is his prophecy on your life? What are what, what are the things that you know God's called you to do? And you need to stand your ground on those things. But we're talking about when there's absolutely you know that you've been disobedient. You know that you you're just you're you're trying to stay with that person that you know is not right for you and God's been trying to tell you to leave for a long time. You know, there's things that you absolutely know the difference. There's a difference in what God's just stretching your faith and causing you to grow little by little. Sometimes you're not ready for the big blessing all at once. Exactly. Before we go, because we have one minute left, uh, yes. we're going to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that every person that's listening on the radio broadcast around the world watching, we ask you in the name of yes. Jesus that you would interrupt our plans and replace them with your holy Amen. plan that is good and that has a hope and that has a future, God. And we pray for, against hopelessness. And we ask that you replace it with faith. Yes. Lord Jesus, we are prisoners of hope. Yes. And we ask you, God, that you would bless every person listening right now or watching. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you all. We're so happy you tuned in today. Hop on over to our website and leave us your prayer requests. Just tell us what you're thinking. We would love to hear from you. That's www.ninaandmichelle.com. God bless you guys. We love you. We love you.